stuff in my pocket and I thought a 20, it sounded like a 22 <laughs> And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, okay. It, it, Who got me? Yeah, Who was, got me? <laughs> I didn't know what it was at first. All right. So, uh, do you mind introducing yourself? I'm J.K. Yarborough, and I'm the UFIFIS Livestock Natural Resources Extension Agent for Orange and Seminole Counties. Okay. All right, so you helped us today with a walkthrough. We went through uh, the 14-acre property. Um, I know it's a lot to try to remember, but what can we expect from an agronomist um, for folks that are unfamiliar with that profession? Yeah. And, uh, and today, what do you think were some of the highlights that we need to to take from from today's visit so first thing the first thing that jumps out at me is uh we have an undergrazed pasture which is a much needed reprieve from the usual overgrazed situations that i find we can deal with we deal with them in different manners but it's much more manageable and workable dealing with an undergrazed pasture versus an overgrazed pasture okay so undergrazed uh, we just need to have a little bit more control grazing maybe some more uh, animal units into the area so our stocking Rate is pretty low, our stocking capacity is pretty low. We need to kind of up those numbers, get a little bit more grazing going on. We have plenty of bahia grass, we have a lot of bahia grass. We have some common Bermuda grass mixed up in there as well. But again, it's all just undergrazed, so it's getting pretty mature. And so uh, we need to try to get some of that reduced if possible. Okay. Uh, on our tree lines, we saw some common species that uh, come our common invasive species that we find in our undisturbed kind of fence lines and areas like that. So we saw Brazilian pepper tree is common. We saw some air potato as well. Um, we saw some Chinese tallow, camphor trees. We saw a couple of uh, oak trees over on this side. Mm. Um, but mostly that Brazilian pepper tree is what we kind of saw as far as species growing up along our fence line. Okay. Uh, we saw some solanum species. I can't remember if exactly if it was horse nettle or what in some of the areas um, growing up and putting some fruit on. Uh, but they mentioned that we saw that they've been moving those layers into that area before. So if they haven't seen anything really any health issues coming from it um it's probably not much to worry about just maybe you start to see some oddities maybe check their feces check where they're grazing see if they're kind of eating a lot of that selenum species which is in the nightshade family okay um other than that yeah control grazing is going to be a big key out here it sounds like you've really got a, a good idea of what you want to envision and how you're going to graze it yeah so in, in, in phase one is really focused on on poultry right so making sure the existing lane hens um, stay away from from toxicity and that the spots that we're moving them on are the highest quality and then as we introduce uh, broilers uh, making sure right like we're so unfamiliar with this process right like what, what are the nutrient uh, differences uh, you know like how much feed do you feed supplemental and how much feed are they gonna get from just being mm -hmm. in a chicken tractor on ground right like eating grass and eating bugs the breed of chicken that we have sure. the the structure that we create we're looking at the Siskovich and or the salatin model mm -hmm. um you know how much water they need all, all that other good stuff we, yeah. we think right now that's a that's a nine to ten week cycle but you know we'll learn right we've, we've read a lot of books and now we got to put it all into action and see what works yeah, out here i knew i told you i'd find out this is? Yeah. This is? Yeah. So we give away, we don't give away how they call it. Forestry calls it the drip tip. Oh, okay. So this stuff just drips right off. All right. So just manage that, keep it up? Uh, it's I, it's an invasive. Um, Would you even has, keep it has, as a shade tree or, or just chop it? Has it has some toxic. It, it's, it's listed as a toxic species. Mm -hmm. Um how much actually how much toxicity actually occurs from them consuming Chinese tallow. I haven't really heard of many cases, but it's probably similar to red maple in that Is it arsenic and stuff or not? Is there something like that? I don't know not? exact I don't know exact toxic, uh, toxic compounds in it, yeah. but if it was to a branch was to fall down in a hurricane or stay right here and if there was to be like no other forage available, someone was to eat it because it's dried up and kinda uh, concentrates those compounds and then we have had some issues with it but uh, like I said, we have so we open the mid um, field gate over here to see if we can encourage them to come over yeah let the, the cows grass. be our labor force yeah. and get the grass down instead of having to pay somebody to come and yeah. hop on a yeah. hop on a tractor with a bush hog or with a bat wing and you know you're going to pay for that the question is 
we know we have undergrazed forage here, so we open up a gate to try to get cows, to entice cows to come over here to try to graze on it. Yeah. You know this, but the way forage and nutrition works, so as the plant grows, the more lignin, in, lignin, which is like a tough cell material, it builds up inside the plant, so it becomes less palatable to the animal. So overgrown grass, just because you have a lot of grass, doesn't necessarily entice the animal to want to go eat it, because actually it's pretty mature and not as palatable. Whereas that stuff they grazed two, three days ago is only grown up by that much, yeah. but it's that much. Is it like bigger. that woody part of asparagus that you hate and spit out as yeah, it, compared exactly, to? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> makes like, sense. Like yeah, it's like, ugh, yeah. what is this part? So because we have a quantity of forage here, we need to have that quality as well to entice them to come over here and do it. And so that's why you see it this time of year, we do a lot of mowing. Somebody's back there we ripping. Have, Knock that plant back down, but still have enough. We don't, we don't throw it to the ground. Okay. Knock enough off so that way it has new growth come up, that way it entices other animals. Okay. Our animals come and want to eat that new growth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, grazers won't, won't touch won't it. it when it gets mature. So they'll eat they'll eat some mature bahia grass, no problem. Yeah. But when this gets mature, the, you'll see like the spots where they'll just avoid. Is it whether it's an additional? I don't know what the con, I don't know what it is. If there's increased lignin content, if there's actual flavor difference, perhaps. For whatever reason, once this gets matured, they don't like it. And then, of course, it is much like the hay grass and that it spreads via seed. A lot of seed. And there's mm -hmm. rice numbers. So, it's actually one of our toxic rags. Oh, for real? Can I kill it? Uh, if you'd like to. Um, Just yeah, pull it up. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. Yep. Oh, step on. I'd pull it up by the roof and toss it somewhere. Oh, this is going to pop it. Oh, okay. That's it. Gosh, it. Um, you, you saw the pods on it. Um, yeah. Those can actually, uh, sometimes... There's a couple of different species of cordillaria. Let me get in there real quick. Um, but most of them have this bean pod style. And what they do is those pods that sometimes will dry up called rattle box. I don't know if you've heard of rattle box. Oh. Yeah. So you it, shake them and they... Yeah, it rattles around. You know, just need to dry up and they rattle up inside. Okay. Or talk to right. I actually had one to show. Uh, I picked one out of our horse pasture to go talk at a horse field day. And it was a dry one. I put it in my pocket. And as I was going home, luckily I was done driving. But the pod actually had reached its and uh -huh. it dried and it popped. Oh my gosh, in your shirt? Yeah, in my oh shirt. No. And, it, and it, that's how it spreads seed. It dries up and then poof. And oh. it spreads everywhere and that's how it spreads. Oh, like a pressure system kind exactly. of. Exactly. So, but it went up in my pocket and I thought a 20, it sounded like a 22 <laughs> you I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. It, Who got me? Scared. Yeah. Who was, got me? <laughs> I didn't know what it was at first. So that's a, that's another one in front of us, right? And so yeah, there's a few more. You right going after that one, Karen? Here, yeah. get it. Here, get it. Get it. Get it, Karen. Don't even tell me you didn't. Yeah, don't okay. even. No. Yeah. You can't pull that up. Yeah. I'll come right over there. Yeah. Crossfit. <laughs> They're all over that fence line. There's a ton of them. They do, and these are all like. There's more. There's more. Yep. Okay. Hey, we can see. So uh, I was trying to check and see if crotalator, I'm pretty sure it's a legume species, actually. Because the way it looks like a bean? Right. Well, the, the bloom, I would more than a pod. Oh, okay. And you can kind of see some of the nodes, actually. Oh, see right. those little pinkish things kind of hanging oh, off yeah. of the root there? Yeah. yeah. Sure those are those symbiotic relationships between the rhizobia bacteria in the soil. Mm -hmm. In fact, the root it has that nitrogen. So the microbe kind of attaches itself to the root wall and then it will begin a nitrogen fixation process. So it will take nitrogen compounds from the soil and it will kind of feed it to make it in a form that's available to the plant. And so it gets nutrients, other nutrients from the plant itself, water and other stuff that has it brings it into the root and then in exchange it kind of has a process with that stuff with the nitrogen and puts it back out in the form that other plants but oh, I've heard, cool. this is a toxic variety, so I'd yeah. Sorry. rather pull it up than have yeah. let it do its yeah, thing. But it's good to hear that we have the forage foundation to introduce ruminants yeah. um, and offer potentially custom grazing or, or purchasing either small, small flocks, small herds for ourselves to stack enterprises. So 
for sure. Yeah, it looks like a good, like I said, it's a much needed reprieve. I go all, all too often I go to places that have too many animals on too small of an area. Yeah. You know, it's, it's overgrazed. We have the opposite around, problem. You know, <laughs> but it's much easier to, you know, since you have the material there, it's much easier to just manage it by either grazing, and in some cases, some mowing will really help as well. Versus if it's undergrazed, you have to start all of them, pretty much from new in some instances. So okay. this is, I'm much happier with this kind of situation, and I look forward to seeing what you're trying to do in the future. Good, good. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time. Absolutely.